Uh, the tanking meeting itself was very clean. Uh, we were done in 30 minutes and, and we gave the go for tanking. Uh, shortly thereafter, the, the, um, the uh, Kennedy Space Center went into a lightning alert and the uh, tanking was delayed for about an hour. And then uh, once the cryo loading started, uh, we started the, um, the loading of the hydrogen. The team quickly uh, encountered a, um, a hydrogen leak at the eight inch quick disconnect, which is our fill and drain. And, um, and that happened when they went into the fast fill uh, phase. Uh, so they had to slow down the loading operation. They chilled down that interface and, and they managed to work their way through the full cryo loading operation of both the uh, core stage as well as the upper stage successfully. Um, once we got through the, uh, the uh, propellant loading on the rocket, both the uh, core stage and the upper stage, they started the engine bleed. Uh, we talked at our flight readiness review about the engine bleed. We knew that that was a risk headed into this launch campaign and it would be the first time demonstrating that successfully. Uh, we did encounter an issue uh, uh, chilling down engine number three. We need the engine to be at the uh, cryogenically cool temperature such that when it starts it's not shocked with all the, the cold um, uh, uh, the cold fuel that flows through it. So we needed a little extra time to, to assess that. Um, when the team uh, started working through that, they also saw an issue with a uh, vent valve um, at the inner tank. So the combination of not being able to uh, get the uh, engine three chilled down and then the uh, vent valve uh, issue that they saw at the inner tank really caused us to pause today and, and we felt like we needed a little, little more time. Um, there was also a series of uh, weather issues throughout the window. We would have been no go for weather at the beginning of the window due to precipitation. And uh, later on in the window, we would have been no go for lightning within the, uh, within the launch pad area. So um, the team worked through a number of issues today. Uh, the team was tired at the end of the day and we just decided that it was the best to knock it off and uh, to reconvene tomorrow. So we've got a uh, mission management team meeting at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna give the team time to rest, first of all, and then come back fresh tomorrow and reassess um, what we learned today and then uh, develop a series of options. It's too early to say what the options are. And then um, as, as uh, Jackie said earlier, uh, we will uh, come back and talk about where we stand um, tomorrow evening with all of you. Um, again, it's, it's an incredibly hard business that we have. Um, in spite, of, in spite of the challenges that we had, as well as some other um, constraints that the team had to work through and set up for. Uh, for example, we had 42 collision avoidance cutouts that we had to manage over the course of the, uh, of the two hour window. Most of those were only a couple of seconds long, but there were a few that were about a minute long. Um, you know, when you start thinking about the type of mission that we're flying, it, it really helps you understand just how unique and how complex uh, the Space Launch System is and the Orion and, and the Artemis program is. We, we have this upper stage, the interim crowd propulsion stage that lofts uh, the, um, the spacecraft to a 975 nautical mile insertion orbit uh, along with the, uh, the SLS core stage. And with that, we need, we need the performance from it, but we fly through part of the orbital debris field, the micrometeorite and orbital debris field. And then uh, one orbit later, we commit to the point of translunar injection. So as we fly up through this orbital debris and then back down to low Earth orbit and then out through the point of translunar injection, we have to know where all these objects are. And that explains those 42 cutouts. And, and that is something that our operations teams were prepared to do today. We just didn't get to the launch window. So um, a number of challenges. Uh, we were ready for some of them and, and the uh, technical challenges we encountered on the um, on the engine bleed and the vent valve are just some things we're gonna to have to go look at today, uh, look at tomorrow after we get a little smarter and get, get rested. So um, with that, I'll pass it to Jim. Yeah, so good afternoon. So the administrator and Mike uh, covered, covered a great deal of things. I'll just highlight a few things for me. You know, I sit in a different vantage point uh, than, than Mike does. Uh, his is a lot more fun, by the way. Uh, but, but we, you know, we're, we're, we're in the uh, LCC and, and I'm, I, I, found some things in the team today. This was a really important attempt for us. We talked about that after Wet Dress 4. There were a lot of questions of, you know, should we have rolled back, tried to do another test? Uh, we, we felt and, and still feel like going for today was the right thing to do. Um, 
and, and that that comes in in a few a few ways. Our our launch team was really I'll say pushed today. They were working a lot of issues. They were looking at the compressed timeline uh, with uh, with that hold at the beginning, and we were filling all four uh, tanks uh, at the same time at one point. Um, really pushing our team through a timeline. Uh, weather, you know, uh, Mike talked about some of the weather. We talked about lightning. Weather was coming in and out. We were actually not able to go at the beginning of the window like we thought. Um, uh, there was a lot of comms from the launch weather officer. Um, the, uh, the hydrogen out of spec that Mike talked about when we went to manual control, that's something we did on the locks when we, uh, we had some issues loading locks the first time. Going to that manual control to me is learning. Um, and, and getting through the first hydrogen leak that we had, that was the same leak we had on the same line to the same level. Um, and when we started to, to do the manual, fast fill uh, honestly it kept climbing and I thought there's no way we're going to get out of this and that got us out of it um, so so to me what we pushed the team through and I know we always get a lot of talking about the team too much but we continue to learn that's what we're doing we're testing I think um, Bob Cabana said it we're testing the people and the processes so we put ourselves through a compressed timeline we're going to get some shorter launch windows we'll have to deal with where these skills will help us. Um, I know you've heard from Charlie about extending our, our uh, timeline uh, about an hour earlier to give us time to work things. I think that helped us today to work things. Um, and frankly, engine three that Mike talked about, we definitely didn't get down to the temperature we wanted, but the other four weren't as low as we would like to. So, so there's some things going on that um, the teams where the team needs to go off and look at the data and understand how this is different from what we did during the green run at, at Stennis um, and then figure out a path forward, which is ultimately where we want to go. We're not going to have all the data and the implications today. I'll reiterate that, what, what Mike said, um, but we, we felt we owed it to you to, to share everything that, uh, that we know. So, um, and I can assure you there was no other group of folks, not just the f folks that worked last night, um, but the folks that started this countdown. There's no other group that wanted to get through this successfully than, than that, those people.